The townships of Edelong and Yamina are located at the entrance to Brisbane Water on the southern end of the Central Coast. Prior to rail and road travel, Edelong was the gateway to Gosford, with all trade to and from the area transiting Brisbane Water on boat and barge, exiting the Central Coast via a sometimes treacherous channel across the Boxhead Shoals. The traditional custodians of the estuary were the dark and young people. It's reasonable to conclude that their relationship with the processes that shaped the estuary was relatively harmonious for several thousand years. Brisbane water was first explored by Europeans in 1789, shortly after establishing the penal settlement at Port Jackson. On the 10th of June, 1789, in his diary, Captain John Hunter described, somewhat prophetically, the perils of the entrance to Brisbane water noting that at low tide, with a subly swell, it was impossible to navigate. Unbeknownst to Captain Hunter, this heralded the first salvo in a conflict between humans and coastal processes, which continues to this day. This presentation provides an overview of the long history of coastal protection works along the beaches of Broken Bay and within the entrance reach of Brisbane Water, and provides an introduction to the Yamina Ocean Beach Erosion Management Project which seeks to develop a holistic and integrated strategy to guide future actions in this area. Yamina and Ocean Beach are situated on the southern edge of the Woiwoi Sand Plain. The Woiwoi Sand Plain is a relatively young geological feature, having formed through a process of progradation over the past four to 6,000 years as sea levels rose to their approximate level. This southern edge of the sand plain is characterised by sandy beaches and a series of nearshore shoals which are constantly moving under the forces of tidal currents, waves and wind. It is the dynamic nature of this system which frames our constant battle with nature. As demonstrated by this graphic, we can see the movement of sand onto the shoal through waves, the movement of sand towards the beach by waves and tidal currents, the movement of sand into the estuary via flood tides, longshore transport of sand, probably both ways on your minor and ocean beach, and possibly only one way on Edlong Beach. Disrupted longshore transport. The movement back onto estuary shoals and out towards Broken Bay by ebb tides. The cross-shore movement of sand by waves, possibly only one way at Edlong. The loss to deep water near Booker Bay by flood tides. And the alien loss of sand. Prior to the completion of the Woi Woi Rail Tunnel in 1888, access to Gosford from Sydney was almost exclusively by water. This meant that nearly all trade had to cross the bar at the entrance to Brisbane Water. In those days, nature had the upper hand because vessels were underpowered and hard to manoeuvre in tight areas. And it is therefore not surprising that there were many grounding on half-tide rocks and the beaches. Seafarers apparently understood the difficulties and risks for the most part and would time their entry or exit with the correct tide. Notwithstanding, there were frequent calls to dredge the entrance and blow up half-tide rocks. Calls for dredging persist to this day and there are still people that would like authorities to entertain the idea of blowing up half-tide rocks or implementing significant engineering solutions such as training walls. The opening of the Woi Woi Rail Tunnel foreshadowed an intensification of development on the Woi Woi Peninsula. Edelong was a popular tourist destination for Sydney siders, and as such, this was one of the areas where expansion occurred first. Everyone wanted to be near the water, and thus a proverbial line in the sand was drawn between fixed urban infrastructure and the estuarine beaches. Unfortunately, this line was too far forward and did not account for the dynamic nature of coastal environments. Sand dunes are like shock absorbers. They expand and contract in response to short-term processes like tides and daily weather conditions and longer-term climate patterns. Coastal erosion is a natural process. Eroded beaches are not broken, nor are they indicative of a failure of management. Notwithstanding, it's important to understand the cycles of erosion in a given embayment to empower effective planning and management. Coastal erosion only becomes an issue in instances where humans build static infrastructure within the dynamic part of a beach or estuary foreshore. Since the line in the sand was drawn, coastal erosion has featured in the lives of generations of residents at Yamina and Edlong. This has resulted in a series of reactive measures to fix problems when they arise, usually in response to significant weather or coastal events. 
and this approach culminated in the construction of a temporary geocontainer seawall along a 100 metre stretch of Ocean Beach near Edlong Point in 2015. Unfortunately, ad hoc protection works are often implemented under intense political and community scrutiny without enough planning and design work and as a result often have undesirable impacts which can lead to further ad hoc works. This highlights the importance of taking a holistic approach to management of this area, built on a detailed understanding of the coastal processes at play. The first attempt to stabilise the foreshore of Edlong Beach in the vicinity of Picnic Parade was undertaken in the 1940s when minor works were constructed to address localised erosion of the beach. This was complemented by some beach nourishment. During the early 1950s, severe erosion of Edlong Beach, again near Picnic Parade, resulted in the installation of approximately 400 metres of rock protection along that foreshore. Additionally, the Esplanade collapsed in the vicinity of Baron Joey Road, and this was repaired and then protected with rocks. It is possible that the erosion event was in part driven by an east coast low, which impacted the area on the 5th of May 1950. In 1967-68, the first large-scale nourishment campaign was implemented, involving the placement of approximately 20,000 cubic metres of sand on Edlong Beach between Picnic Parade and Snapper Road. In an apparent attempt to maximise the retention of this sand, four low-level rock groins were also constructed along this section of beach. Also in 1967, a section of the Esplanade between Kurung Street and Bangalow Street was reinstated and protected with rock armouring, likely having been damaged during severe storms experienced in the winter and spring of 1967. The early 70s was characterised by stormy conditions with several large events on the record, including a continental low between 22 to 25 July 1971, affecting the entire coast of southeast Queensland and New South Wales, producing an east-southeast swell with significant wave heights of 5.4 metres. Tropical Cyclone Daisy from 10 to 13 February 1972, which affected the coast from Yapoon to central New South Wales. The infamous storms of 1974, which to this day provide the design storm benchmark for coastal engineering work. Not surprisingly, there was a significant amount of ad hoc coastal protection works within the area during the 1970s. Commencing with the reconstruction of the Esplanade between Baron Joey Road and Kurung Street in 1972, along with the construction of additional rock armouring and two large groins at Edlong Point. To combat subsequent downdrift erosion, three additional groins were constructed between Kurung Street and Lagoon Street in 1973, and, chasing the downdrift, Additional rock armouring was placed between Lagoon Street and Bangalore Street from 1974 to 1977. A significant amount of works have been undertaken in the 40-year period from 1980. Much of the work over the last decade has focused on replacing ageing infrastructure. In the early 1980s, foreshore reclamation between Bangalore Street and Beach Street was completed and the foreshore was armoured with rock. This completed foreshore armouring between Edlong Point and Beach Street, which began in the 1960s. This was coupled with a large beach nourishment campaign involving the movement of approximately 52,000 cubic metres of sand from the shoals onto Edlong Beach. Approximately two thirds of this sand was used to create a series of sand groins in an attempt to divert the flood tide channel and prolong the longevity of the nourishment. During the 1980s, the importance of dune vegetation was formally recognised and a program to revegetate dunes was commenced. Dune vegetation management continues to this day. In 1999, a further 15,000 cubic metres of sand was placed on Edelong Beach, coming from the excavations of the basement for the Mantra development. In 2012, the rock armouring along the foreshore between Bangalow Street and Beach Street was renewed, and a further 30,000 cubic metres of sand was placed on Edelong Beach from the Edelong Shoals. Ongoing sand nourishment is required to protect the Lance Webb Reserve wall, to protect European and Aboriginal heritage items. Further to this, the community has an expectation that there will be a usable beach during most tidal conditions. 
In 2014, the foreshore along Landsweb Reserve was armoured with rock, replacing works implemented in the late 1960s. In 2015, following a significant coastal storm, a temporary GA container seawall was constructed to protect the Esplanade at Barangay Road. Additionally, a program of beach scraping was implemented between Ocean Beach Surf Life Saving Club and Edlong Point, which was ongoing for many months until the beach started to recover. History has taught us that if we as a community wish to maintain our line in the sand in this location, coastal protection works will be required. There will be impacts because the ultimate, underlying intention of coastal protection works is to change natural processes to mitigate risk to property and infrastructure or perceived negative changes to sandy foreshores. An eroded beach is not broken, it's simply in a phase which humans find less desirable. The Central Coast Council has a desire to develop and implement a holistic management strategy for this location, informed by a better understanding of coastal processes making it more proactive and less confrontational with nature. There will still be impacts, however, by developing a better understanding and appreciation for the natural forces shaping the area, and Council will be better able to foresee and articulate unavoidable impacts. The intention is to work closely with the community to enable integrated management of multiple issues, ranging from maintenance of the navigation channel, to beach nourishment, to protection of assets and infrastructure. The Yamina Ocean Beach Erosion Management Strategy will provide the framework enabling this proactive approach to be realised. The program has involved intensive investigations of the morphodynamics of the boxhead shoals and associated beaches, the feasibility of beach nourishment to improve beach amenity and development of design options for terminal protection of the esplanade and adjacent infrastructure. Triggers for implementing actions are tied to various parameters including the depth and width of the entrance channel tidal prisms and beach volumes. Implementing the strategy will require ongoing monitoring of the sedimentary system so that works can be planned and carried out before major issues manifest. This will also facilitate improved communication between Council, the community and other key stakeholders. Broken Bay is a unique and beautiful environment and it's of paramount importance that the preservation of the natural environment is front and centre in our shared strategies to manage this area.